What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build a fun little tic-tac-toe game for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build this fun little tic-tac-toe game. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this fun little tic-tac-toe game. Very simple game. You get three across, boom, you win. It disables, changes the color. We can restart the game, play again if we want, whatever. And uh, pretty simple. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kivi videos in the series, over 60 so far. So check those out if you haven't so far. So I've got two files here, toe.kv, tic-tac-toe, and toe.py. And this is our basic Kivi starter code that we've always got. And I've got it pointed to toe.kv, it's our Kivi file. So start out, we just want a basic MD float layout and the layout you use is completely irrelevant. Make it look however you want. I just made it look very basic in this video just because we wanna get the functionality down more than anything else. So let's start building this thing out. I'm gonna use inside of our MD float layout an MD grid layout. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we're gonna have a grid of three by three, MD grid layout, why not? So let's give this a size underscore hint of like, let's say 0.5 by 0.5, give it a position underscore hint of center underscore X of 0.5. And let's also, while we're at it, go center underscore Y of 0.7 ish. That's probably good. So now we want columns, we want three, and we want three columns because this is gonna be a basic tic-tac-toe game and it has three columns, right? And we want rows of three as well because there'll be three across. Okay, so that's our basic grid layout. Inside of here now we wanna define our buttons. So I'm just gonna use a regular button here, give this an ID of button one, and for now we want text to be nothing. And let's give this a font underscore size of like, let's say 45-ish something like that, make it nice and big, any size you want, doesn't really matter. And then let's go on release, let's call app.press or presser or whatever, and we wanna pass in this button. Now we don't have this app.presser function, we'll have to create that, so let's come back over here real quick, and just for now define presser, we wanna pass in self, we wanna also pass in that button, and for now we'll just pass. So okay, we're gonna need nine of these buttons. So I'm just gonna take this off of here for now and then copy this and paste this eight more times. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need nine buttons. So, all right, let's come back up here and put in the one. And then for this one, we'll put in two. Very exciting work here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so those are our buttons, pretty simple. So underneath here, outside of our grid layout, let's put a little label just so we can keep track of whose turn it is, flash up a message to say, hey, you won or whatever. And so let's go MD label and let's give this an ID of score. We'll use this to keep score. Let's go font underscore size. And what do we say? Like maybe 32-ish, something like that. And let's go text. And let's just have this say by default, X goes first, woohoo, right? And then let's give this a H align of like center, put it right in the middle of the screen and give it a position underscore hint. And let's give this a center underscore Y of like 0.3, kind of push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, that's good. While we're at it, let's go ahead and create a button underneath so we can like reset the game. We can click the thing if we wanna start over or whatever. So I'm gonna give this an MD raised button and let's give this an ID uh, restart. And for text, let's have it say restart the game. And let's give this a position hint of let's say center underscore X of let's say 0.5. And let's give it a center underscore Y of 0.15. Okay, and so on release, let's give this an app.restart function. We don't have this function yet, so let's head back over here, save this real quick, and let's just knock this out too. So we'll pass in self, and for now, let's just pass. 
So, okay, we did a bunch of stuff there real quick. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over to our terminal. I'm in my CKVMD directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's run python toe.py. Okay, so X goes first. We've got a button here, nothing happens. We have these things and nothing happens yet when we click them, but we're coming right along. Uh, oops, there we go. Gotta have this button one. Hypo already. So, okay, now uh, for this presser button, what do we wanna happen when we actually click one of these guys? Well, we've got our presser function here. We haven't actually done anything with it. Before we get into that, let's create a variable up here and let's say define whose turn it is. And I'm just gonna call this turn, right? And by default, when the game starts, it'll be X's turn, so we'll put X in there. So you'll notice here in our presser function, we're passing in a variable called button. And you remember, we passed that right in here. We're just passing this button into the function so we can do stuff with it. Well, what do we wanna do with it? Well, when we click it, we want the text to change to whatever we clicked on. So we need to determine whose turn it is, right? So let's say if self.turn equals X, and we know it is up here because this is what it starts at by default, then we can change the button.text to equal X, right? We also probably wanna disable that button. So when we click on it, you can't click on it again. You can't change it once it's already been selected, right? So we can go button dot disabled, set that equal to true. Now we also wanna update this label down here to say, you know, it's somebody else's turn, whoever's turn it is. So that's gonna be self.root.ids.score.text equals, and let's say it's now O's turn, right? because if X just went, then the next person to go is O, right? So, okay, that's good for now. We'll modify this a little bit as we get going here, because also every time we make a selection, we wanna know, hey, did that person just win or not? We're not that far along yet, so we'll do that later. But for now, we'll just do it like this. So otherwise, if it's not X's turn, that means it's O's turn. So we want the btn.txt to equal O. And we also want a btn dot disabled to equal true. And then up here, we wanna change this to X's turn. Now, when one of the players have gone X or O, it's no longer their turn anymore. So we need to update our turn thing, right? So we could go self dot turn equals O. Now I'm using the letter capital O, that's not the number zero. I don't know how important that is, but that's what we're doing. And we wanna do the same thing down here but now it's gonna be X's turn, right? Okay, so that seems good. Let's go ahead and run this and try it just to make sure. And so when we click this X, O, X, O, X, O. So now we click it, it went X. So now it's O's turn. So we click again, boom, that's O, changes to X's turn. Okay, so that basic functionality works. Now let's fix this button really quick so that we can you know, clear the game and start over again. So we can do that real quick back over here and we've got this restart function. First, reset whose turn it is, right? So if the game is over and we're resetting, we want self.turn to equal X because X goes first at the beginning of the game, right? Now let's enable the buttons. So we want self.root.ids.btn1.disabled equals false. Now I'm gonna take this one off because we need to copy this a bunch of times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then let's come in here and put our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Woo, that was blazingly fast, right? Okay, so we also want to clear the buttons, right? So again, it's gonna be self.root.ids.btn.txt equals nothing. And again, we'll copy this two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then come through here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, boom, getting good at that, right? So we could probably play around with this code and make it a little smaller by using a, a for loop or something. Eh, good enough, just like this, for now at least. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see how that looks, see if it worked. So we can do a bunch of things. Reset the game, everything goes back to zero. It's now X's turn. X goes first, O. Our counter thing seems to be working here. Well, our label thing, I guess you would call it. 
So X just went, so now it's O's turn. Boom, O's, X's, okay, we can try it again. Okay, seems to be looking pretty good. So now you'll notice I've got three X's across here and the game didn't realize that we won, so we need to build some logic out to do that. But this video is getting a little bit long, so I think we'll stop right here and we'll do that in the next video. There's also a few other little bells and whistles we wanna do. So it should take another 10 or 15 minutes to finish this out. We'll do that next time, but uh, so far so good. Super easy to get the basic functionality in here. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.